welcome back to the channel. So I picked up last week a bushel of apples for a really good price. So every year our local Mennonite store gets um, boxes or bushels of apples in and they're $20. They have a wide variety and they're really good, big, hard, crisp apples. And so I always try and pick up a box and get whatever my apple trees here on our homestead don't do well with, I try and get, pick it up. So I am going to make three different things out of these apples. So I've separated, weighed them, and separated them into two bowls. In this bowl right here, I have 15 pounds of apples, and I'm gonna make those into um, apple pie filling and can them. And then these, they didn't fit in my bowl. Um, these apples right here is 12 apples, and I'm gonna use my handy dandy juicer, and I'm going to get apple juice out of these, and then take them, once they're soft from getting all the apple juice out, and blend them up into applesauce. So I'm gonna get as much product as I can out of these apples. You could even save all of your skins and cores and everything and make apple cider vinegar out of them. Apples is a really good way to get a lot of things out of. Um, I have plenty of apple cider vinegar, so I'm not going to save those. I'll just let my chickens have a nice treat. But first thing we're gonna do is do the apple juice and apple sauce because that one is the easier of the two. And so I'm gonna prep all of these apples in this bowl here. And basically all I'm gonna do is slice them up, take the skins off and get them into my juicer. So I'm gonna use my juicer here. I got this on Amazon. Um, I think it's less than 100 bucks. I think I paid like 80 for it. It's amazing, because you can do any fruit and you maximize your fruit completely and it's super easy. Uh, two years ago, I picked pounds and pounds and pounds of grapes at a vineyard and I literally left them on the stems and everything and just picked them up and put them in here and had grape juice coming out here. It was so easy. So how it works is, the bottom one has water in it, so I filled it almost all the way to the brim with water. The center is where your juice is gonna go, and it's gonna come out this little spout here. And then the top is a strainer, and that's where you put your fruit. The spout has a clamp on it so that you'll start to see the juice, once it fills up to where the spout's at, you'll start to see the juice fill in here, and then you know you're ready to start filling your jars. You can do this in different ways. I've done it where I've stacked some buckets and put a bowl right under it and just let it constantly flow and watched it. But this is, makes it really, really easy because I'm just gonna actually fill my jars right from the spout and get them ready to go in the canner. So once you're, but this is the cool part about it, is this is gonna make juice, but then it's cooking your fruit on top. So when you've gotten all of your juice, then you can go ahead and take what's on top throw it into a pot and blend it up and you have applesauce. So it's a dual purpose, I love it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And I'm gonna do it, you want your, um, you want the steam effect, so you want your bottom to get really hot. So I have it here on like seven or six, not super, super high, but more like medium. And I'm gonna fill all the top with my apples. I might be able to get these, oops, all in one shot. Yep, I definitely can. So 
so I'm not exactly sure how many um, quarts of juice this is going to give me. Ooh, I have a seed in here. So I'm, um, and I'll just put my lid on. So I have four quarts already washed and ready to go. And then I'm going to let this go until I start to see the juice right here. You could also lift this part up and look and see where your juice is at. But once I have this going, I'll fill my jars and get them into the canner. Having this juicer really is helpful in processing many, many different fruits and if you want juice with it. Okay, so while our juicer is going and the juice is starting to um, get here in the middle of the pot, I'm gonna start pouring and peeling all of my apples for the apple pie filling. So in this large bowl here, move that back a little bit. In this large bowl here, I just have a bunch of cool water and I'm doing a couple tablespoons of lemon juice in it. This is just to help prevent browning because I'm going to stick all of my slices in this bowl to wait until we're ready to do the apple pie. I am using, for the second time this season, my um, apple core and slicer and peeler attachment that comes with my KitchenAid. It is a game changer when you're doing apples. So, no more hand cranking. This is amazing. If you have a KitchenAid stand mixer, I highly recommend this. It comes with multiple attachments, so it's not just for apples. You can, oh gosh, I think there's five or six different attachments, so you can spiral zucchini, you can do all kinds of things, potatoes, um, but I've used it now. This will be my second time with apples. It's amazing. So, I, I have it already attached to my KitchenAid. I'm gonna stick my apple on it. I'm gonna put that there. Now I'm just going to turn it on. It's going to do all the work for me. I just kind of catch it as it goes. Once it's done, I take the whole peels off. There's a little bit that dropped right here. And I will take a knife, slice them down the middle so they are perfect little slices for apple pie filling. And actually, I forgot about this step. If I put this bowl right underneath, it catches all the waste for me and that would be a nice treat for my chicken. So I'm gonna get all of this going so that they are ready to go and I'm not canning up pie filling all day long. sliced and ready to go for apple pie just in time this is filled with juice so I'm gonna go ahead and get this hot juice into my jars oh, I still have a little bit of water in it from so all I'm gonna do is just take my do it here with my left hand take my jar hold it down here and I'm gonna fill this to a fourth of an inch of headspace and it's just going to fill all the way up with the apple juice. I'll clamp it when it's full. Okay, so 
it did not make me very much juice, but that's okay. I have a quart here and then a half of a pint. So I'm actually not going to can this. I do have some canned on my shelf, but I'm not gonna can these because I actually need this apple juice for my apple pie filling. So I'll go ahead and just use what I have here um, to add to my apple pie filling instead of going through the process of canning. If I got enough juice to be able to can them, then I would go ahead and put them in a water bath canner, completely submerged, my jars would be to a fourth of an inch of headspace, wipe the rims, put the lid and ring on, then place them in my canner, and I would process them for 10 minutes adjusting for my elevation, which here in Missouri would be 15 minutes. Since I'm not canning them, I'm just gonna set these off to the side until I am ready for my um, apple pie filling, and then I'll put them in during that step. I went ahead and took all of my apples that are now cooked out of the strainer side of this juicer and I put them in this pot. I'm gonna take an emergent blender and I'm going to blend it all up. I'm gonna add in four tablespoons of lemon juice. These are crimson crisp red apples, so they are sweet apples. I'm not going to add sugar. You could add three cups of sugar to this mini apples. I'm not going to do that. We don't like super sweet applesauce anyway, so the sweetness of the apples is perfect for us. I'm gonna then fill my quart size jars to a half an inch headspace, and then I'll process them in a water bath can, completely submerged in water for 20 minutes, adjusting for my elevation, which here in Missouri, then I would do 25 minutes. When you fill your jars to the half inch headspace, you want to make sure that you stick something down in them and get all the air pockets out before you wipe the rims and cap them and put the rings on. Because if you don't do that, then they could not get a proper seal. You wanna get all the air bubbles out and this is a thicker substance, so you wanna make sure you do that. So I'm gonna get this all prepped and get this in the canner ready to go. I do have my canner filled and I have it on low right now just so the water is lukewarm. I'll crank that up once I get my jars washed and get them filled with the applesauce. slices for my apple pie filling. So this is kind of a two-step process and what I have here is my large pot filled with water about halfway and I have it coming to a boil. I have another pot over here with a lid to keep them warm. I'm gonna blanch all of these apple slices in this hot water for about one minute, stick it in this other pot, put the lid on to keep them warm. Then we'll go ahead and make up the gel or the filling stuff and add the apples into that and be ready to fill our jars. This will likely do anywhere from six to eight quarts of apple pie filling. And I have quite a few apple slices here, so I'm really hopeful I get quite a bit. And um, just for your own knowledge, two quarts of apple pie filling usually makes up one good, nice, big apple pie. So if you have a normal size pie pan um, and you want it nice and full, two quarts usually fill that up. So it takes that much to make a pie. I have five quarts on my shelf right now, so I'm hoping to get at least 10. And we don't make apple pie all the time, but it is nice to have on my shelf for when I want to have it. I definitely will make one for Thanksgiving. So we're gonna go ahead and get all these blanched and warm, and then we'll make up our filling. jelly part of the apple pie filling mixed up in here so that I can add my apples back in. So the first thing that you want to add is five cups of sugar. I'm sorry, that was five and a half cups of sugar. So one, two, three, four, five, and then a half. This is 
the evaporated cane sugar juice that I get on Azure Standard. So it's more of like a tan color. Um, basically, it is not super ultra refined like processed sugar you get at the store. It is from the cane sugar plant. They just evaporate the juice from it and then crystallize it and stop it at that instead of ultra refining it and bleaching it and doing all the things after that. So I get that on Azure Standard, which I can link in the description. And then I have clear gel here. I'm gonna go ahead and add in one and a half cups of that. I'm gonna do one tablespoon of cinnamon. One teaspoon of nutmeg. Two and a half cups of water. And then five cups of apple juice. Now this is where I'm gonna use the juice that I just made for my applesauce. I do have more downstairs in my long-term pantry if I need it. I think this might actually be just five cups right here. Yep, that'll be five cups. And the last thing I'm going to add to this pot is three-fourths a cup of lemon juice. And this is just bottled lemon juice I also get on Azure Standard. Now I'm going to take a spoon here and I'm going to stir this all together and turn my stove on. And I'm going to let this get nice and thick. Once it's all thick and bubbly, I'll go ahead and fold in all of my apple slices and then we'll be ready to fill our jars. going to fill each jar to a half of an inch headspace and you just kind of have to work with it because the apples are a little bit stiff still they'll cook down as they're in the canner but you want to make sure you have a half an inch of headspace on each jar before you get the air pockets out and cap them to get them into the just to get out any air pockets. And now I'm gonna take this clean dish towel. It has some water on it. If you really have dirty rims, you might wanna dip it in some white vinegar just to make sure that your rims are very, very clean because if they're not, uh, your jars will not seal down. I'm gonna wipe each of my rims, making sure to get off any stickiness on them. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and cap each of my jars, screwing them down fingertip tight. That just means once you hit resistance, you stop. You don't want to crank them down too much. Okay, now these are ready to get into the canner. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put my lid on and turn my stove top on to high. These are gonna process in here for 30 minutes, uh, adjusting for your elevation. So here in Missouri, I will process them for 35 minutes, but I won't start my timer until they come to a full rolling boil. Then I'll go ahead and turn the stove top off after they're in there for 35 minutes, take the lid off, wait a couple minutes, and then I'll remove my jars and let them cool completely 
before ready to put them on my shelf. That is how I have gotten three different things out of a bushel of apples. Make sure to like and subscribe to the video. I send out one new video every single week. Jump on over to the blog and put in your email address over there. I send out an email over there on Tuesdays and that usually has different recipes and different things that were going on here on the homestead. I hope that you learned three different ways that you can put up a bushel of apples and to get more food in your long-term food storage area. We'll see you next time. Take care.